The Simpit IndyCar Series visited West Allis, Wisconsin and the Milwaukee Mile for 120 laps of short track IndyCar racing. The Milwaukee Mile, as its name implies, is a one mile oval that features four corners and the very slightest of banking. Despite the limited banking, the short distance of the laps, and a little bit of aero push, we will still be seeing blistering lap times coming in at under 21 seconds a lap, with drivers hitting 180 miles per hour when entering the corners. The top qualifier for the race was Alex Saunders for the second week in a row, as he shows his abilities on both the road and oval side of things. His qualifying time was a 20.386 and came in a tenth faster than Michael Thompson, who would start on the outside of the front row. As the pace car rolled out, Paul Jennings, who should have started in third, had some trouble and was pulled off the grid. He started the race from the pits. Meanwhile, my team never got the car running and we missed the grid entirely after paying the entry fees. This moved everyone up two spots for the start of the race. As the pace car pulled off, Saunders got a great jump on the field and went into turn one all alone. Thompson didn't get a very good start and immediately found himself in a battle with Karsten Berdowie and Robert Grosser, who both got a good run down low into turn one. Three wide, they headed into the corner and all three drivers did a great job of holding their lines and Thompson dropped back to fourth place. Grosser and Bordawi fought it out side by side for a lap and a half until finally Grosser gained the position and took over second position. Bordawi now in third. Meanwhile, Saunders had built up a sizable lead up front. Then on lap seven, while running in 17th place, Charles Painter got loose going into turn one. He spun down into the apron and came back up into the track right into the path of Marco Barbonera and they collided. Terry Allen narrowly avoided the wreck. This brought out the first caution and also ended the day for both Barbonera and Painter. With only eight laps of running on their tires, most of the grid stayed out as we prepared for the restart that would come on lap 11. Saunders again got a good jump and the field stretched out a bit right away. TJ Masick got a good jump in seventh and passed Andrew Dixon for sixth place. Meanwhile, Steve Llewellyn almost brought out another caution as he nearly spun into turn one. He collected the car, got it back on track, no caution. By lap 20, Saunders was out to a good sized lead once again. Robert Grosser was still in second, a bit back, with Bradawi still in third and Thompson right behind in fourth. On lap 27, Paul Jennings would once again start to become a factor in the race. After starting in the pits, he had pulled up into eighth place and was on the gearbox of Andrew Dixon running seventh. Then going into turn one, he passed him easily, and by the end of the backstretch, he is already making a move on Masick, who he also cleared and pulled into sixth place. By lap 30, Saunders was still in the lead, but was no longer gaining over Grosser in second. Berdali was still within reach of Grosser as he maintained third, and it was now a ways back to fourth place and Michael Thompson. Also still running in fifth was John Hill a bit further back but he was now contending with the moving up through the grid car of Paul Jennings. It was a lap later that Jennings made his move down low into three and took over that fifth spot. By lap 39, the leaders were dealing with lapped cars and this seemed to affect Saunders the worst. As he was clearing the way, Grosser and Bordawi were able to close up and the top three were running together with a good gap over fourth. Things would stay the same for a while until on lap 60, we would see Robert Grosser and Karsten Berdawi make a run for pit lane under green flag conditions. Alex Saunders stayed out another lap. And as they sat on pit lane, we had a very strange event occur not to their advantage. Andrew Dixon came up on a lap down car of Keith Rowe, who might have been slowing to enter pit lane. He slows up Dixon, who comes up on him fast. He too might have been looking for pit lane and that is when he is slammed from behind by Jason Paul. Both cars are hurt badly and somehow John Hill gets through the wreck without major damage. Luigi Graffini isn't so lucky. Also not lucky at all are Robert Grosser and Karsten Bordawi who were caught on pit lane during the wreck that brought out the caution. Grosser gets lucky enough to get off pit lane just ahead of Saunders, but it looks like Bradawi was caught speeding and was held in the pits long enough to put him behind the leaders and then after being cycled around the pace car was at the tail of the lead lap. 
After the rest of the field had pitted, they would see the restart on lap 65 with Robert Grosser now on the point with Alex Saunders in second. Now in third spot is Paul Jennings who started in the pits, followed by Michael Thompson in fourth, John Hill in fifth. Then coming off a of turn two, well in the lead, Grosser spins on cold tires and ends up slamming the inside retaining wall. Everyone else gets by clear and we stay green flag racing. This allowed Paul Jennings to make a run at Saunders and he clears him coming off turn four to lead the race at the end of lap 66. Saunders wasn't done with the fight yet and he made his move going into turn one on the very next lap, taking back the top spot and the lead of the race. By the end of lap 70, Saunders had maintained his lead over Jennings. Hill now owned the third spot and it was Martin Nadelkerton who after pit stops was running in fourth and Michael Thompson rounding out the top five. On lap 82, Saunders would catch up to a group of back markers who were fighting it out for position. And as he looks for a clear way through, this allowed Paul Jennings to pull up and fight him for the lead again. As they enter turn three, they are side by side with Leandro Matos. Matos and Jennings touch and it sends Jennings up into the wall, ending his chance for a victory or even a good finish. This brought out the third caution of the race and as they came to pit lane, Saunders stayed out in front and then it was flurry of cars coming for fresh tires. Michael Thompson also stayed out and inherited second position. Karsten Berdawi also skipped pit lane and moved all the way back up to third place after his earlier troubles on pit lane. That restart came on lap 86 and Saunders once again got a good jump and took over control of the race. Back in fifth place, Nagelkirchen got a good start and passes Hanger for fourth. Jan Hoffman follows Nagelkirchen underneath Hanger, dropping him all the way back to seventh place. Zach Ranke also gets into the mix as the freight train drops Hanger back to eighth. Meanwhile, up front, Bordawi gets a good run on Thompson and is able to pass him for second place. After 90 laps, it was still Saunders out front by a good margin over Bradawi, followed by Thompson, Nagelkirchen, and Hoffman in fifth. Then on lap 96, Zach Ranke passes Jan Hoffman for fifth place. And after 100 laps, Saunders had built up a three second lead over Bradawi, who was followed immediately by Thompson, Nagelkirchen, and Ranke with only 20 laps left in the race. And as the laps ticked down, the battles for positions heated up. Ranky got a good run on Nagelkirchen and passed him low for fourth. Then on lap 109, while running in second place, Karsten Berdawi comes up on the already a few laps down car of Keith Rowe. It seems unclear to both drivers who is going which way and Karsten hits him from behind. The hard charging Michael Thompson has nowhere to go and gets into the wreck as well and his car goes flying through the air. Zach Ranky almost gets through the mess and at the last second clips the nose of Bradawi's spinning car and he goes around as well. A few other cars get through cleanly and we saw our fourth caution flag of the day and a restart coming with less than 10 laps left in the race. When the caution had been thrown, Ranky was actually ahead of Nagelkirchen and he was waved by and would restart back in second place. Then when they restarted on lap 114, it was Saunders once again bringing them to the green. He got another good start and headed into turn one alone, followed by Ranke, Nagelkirchen, Hoffman, and Hanger. By the end of the backstretch, Nagelkirchen had pulled inside of Ranke. They fought it out all the way through turns three and four, and this allowed Hoffman to get a run on the both of them. They go three wide down the front stretch, and by turn one, it's Hoffman into second, and Ranke is now fighting with Nagelkirchen for third. They run side by side and Ranky carries so much speed on the outside that he is now on the outside of Hoffman again going into three. Meanwhile, John Hill takes a look inside a hangar going into one. He took over the fifth spot and was right on the heels of the battle just ahead. Then with five to go, Saunders had built up a two second lead over that intense battle for second place. Four to go and that fight for second now included Hill and Hanger who had pulled up into striking distance. With three to go and heading down the backstretch, John Hill pulled inside a nail curtain. He held the low line, took over position, and moved into fourth place. Then with two to go at the line, it was Saunders all alone in the lead. Then Hoffman followed very closely by Ranke 
and then Hill and Nagelkirchen. One to go, and Alex Sanders still out in front. Hoffman now clearly in second, but Ranky is still looking for a move to take back that second spot. Alex Saunders came off turn four all alone and won the race by two and a half seconds. But back behind him, the battle continued with Jan Hoffman hanging on to second place, followed by Zach Ranke. John Hill finished strong in fourth place, and Martin Nagelkirchen finished in fifth. Filling in the top ten were Hanger, Masick, Shump, Bradali, and Graffini. And after four races, Nigel Marnif still holds on to the points lead with 416. Ricardo Scheibon is in second place with 356, and David Hanger has moved up to the third spot with 304. Austin Espetee maintains fourth over Karsten Bradawi. Also after four races, we have had over 80 drivers score points in the series, and we have seen some great racing so far. Next week, the series heads to Iowa Speedway for two ovals in two weeks. Please head to thesimpit.com for any information on the racing series, the point standings, and all of our recaps and coverage of the series. I would like to congratulate Alex Saunders on his dominant win, and we'll see you in Iowa.